so how many colorists are there here with me? All right, how many editors are there that get stuck doing color correction? Okay. And how many Resolve users are there out there? Okay, so I know the questions you have, and I will do my best to answer them very quickly in my 10 minutes up on stage. Um, I'm Alexis Van Herkman. You probably know me. I've written a bunch of manuals, including the DaVinci Resolve manual. I work as a colorist. I also do some training for rippletraining.com. Some of the stuff I'm going to show you is in a new, new features title I just did. So check out rippletraining.com if you want more information. And I just upgraded the color correction handbook. So my publisher is always mad when I don't mention it. There, I've mentioned it. So anyway, I am talking about DaVinci Resolve 10.1. It's a new version that's come out in lockstep with Final Cut Pro 10.1. And forgive me if I get the names interchanged, because it's really hard to keep them, keep track of them. Um, so the two things I want to share with you, because I've been getting emails, and they're questions I've had. And I've just gotten my hands on that machine over there in the last two days. And I'm pretty impressed with it. Uh, first off, does DaVinci Resolve run on Mavericks? And the answer is yes, it does. 10.1 runs on Mavericks. Now, the caveat is that they're still working out some edge casey kinds of things. So they're still working on it. They're going to improve it, and it's going to get even better. But as of right now, if you've got a new machine and you have to run it on Mavericks, you absolutely can. That's not going to be a problem. And the other question people generally have is, has it been optimized for the new Mac Pro? And the answer is yes. They've been spending months and months and months optimizing DaVinci Resolve to work with these ATI processors. Uh, however, the caveat is it's still a work in progress. So the good news is it runs fast now, and it's going to run faster later. So this is a story that's only going to improve as time goes on. Now I'm going to switch over, because personally I hate using slides. I'd rather show you stuff. So we're going to take a look at a round trip workflow first off. Now, this is not anything new. Uh, the truth is DaVinci Resolve was one of the first applications to support round trip workflows with Final Cut Pro 10's new XML flavor. And every new version of Resolve that has come out, they've added support for a few more elements. Now, those of you who've had to deal with prepping color correction timelines and round trip workflows, you know what I'm talking about when I say, I always wish there was less of that. I would love to just be able to send the timeline to DaVinci Resolve and have everything just appear so I can start working instead of fooling around in the timeline. And every version, we get a little bit closer to that. So here is a timeline that is needlessly complicated. I've thrown in all kinds of silly things. There's lots of speed changes littered around. There's multiple tracks of audio. I've got a bunch of keyframed effects, dissolves, and other transitions. And I want to show you in the new version, this is uh, 10.1 going to Resolve 10.1, how clean this can be. So with this timeline selected, I want to make sure I've got the right thing selected. I can go File, Export, and I'm just going to drop this into my Documents folder. I'm going to call this Blessed Version 2 and save that. And now I'm going to quit. Now, another question I've been asked is, how does DaVinci Resolve deal with the new consolidated library format? Um, I don't have all the answers, but what I can tell you, what I've been doing in the last couple days, is if you consolidate all of the media to an external location, you can relink to it just fine. So the new file format is not any kind of a problem for DaVinci Resolve. I've noticed DaVinci Resolve is also able to see inside of the bundles. So it's entirely possible you may be able to leave it where it is now. But again, I haven't done a whole bunch of comprehensive testing, so I'm not going to take a firm stand on that right now. So I'm going inside of Resolve. I'm opening up a new project. Jump into the Edit page. Right click, Import, AAF. I'm going to choose that XML. Click OK. It's going to ask me where the media is. This is perfectly normal. I'm going to drill down 
to where I've stashed it in movies. It takes a few moments to think, and there's my timeline with incredible fidelity. You saw the other one. This one looks very much the same. Before I do anything else, this is an HD project, but because I'm monitoring UHD, I just want to switch that over before I do anything else. Close this down, and now as I scrub through, there, I've got a nice 4K upconverted picture. So I want to call your attention to a few things here. If I jump up here to the beginning and zoom in, you'll see that all my superimposed clips come in where they should. If I open up the timeline keyframe area, you can see that all of the keyframes that I'd created in Final Cut 10 come on over, which is a fantastic feature because it means I can now customize this as I continue working on finishing this program. So as I go down the line, I can see all of my keyframes. If I go back to the beginning, you can see that these audio keyframes have come in. In addition to these crossfade handles, or I shouldn't call them crossfade handles, the fader handles, those all come through. Furthermore, you can see these little time badges on here. If I press Command-R, there's a new speed change feature inside of DaVinci Resolve that's able to contain the kinds of speed changes that Final Cut Pro generates. So all of that is able to come in and be contained inside of a DaVinci timeline with a minimum of me having to deal with things that don't quite work. A uh, few other things I'll mention, there's new support for stills. So if you're using stills in your timeline and you're flying them around with transforms, all of that now comes into Resolve, which is fantastic news. And they're just starting to implement support for titles coming in. So you saw that Paris title before. Yes, the size and the font isn't quite right, but the color's right, and the text is well spelled, so I don't have to check the spelling of the editor. So I'm happy to have this, and it's getting even better. Again, it's always a work in progress with DaVinci. They just don't ever stop coding. I, I don't know when they sleep, honestly. So the round trip story is really great and getting easier, but of course, the other question you have is what's the performance like? To show that off, I'm going to open up this project that has some of the Dragon media that has been shown <laughs> off. Now, this is 6K Dragon media in the timeline. Now, the story with DaVinci Resolve and Dragon media, you can open it up inside of Resolve, but they still don't have access to so software GPU accelerated debayering just yet. So as soon as that gets released into the wild, I'm sure they'll have a new version forthcoming. So this performance story is only going to improve. However, brute force, with the current shipping version of DaVinci Resolve, this is a quarter res debayer. And I'm going to jump over to the color page so you can see what I've done here. If I go to just a plain old clip with not a whole lot coming on and press play, if you look up here in the corner, you can see quarter res debayer. I'm doing it in real time, just brute force right off of the processor, uh, real time 2397. But of course, we're colorists. We do things. So if I jump back to this other clip and frame this up, Again, I've created an excessively complicated grade, just to make a point. And I want to call your attention to a few features. I've got some primaries in there. I also have some secondaries that I've generated with feathering. I also have some multi-window setups with Gaussian blurs. So I've got one massive Gaussian blur there. I have another massive Gaussian blur over here. Just to show you, I've got nothing up my sleeve. And this one, I'm layering back in with a composite mode to create a nice soft effect. <coughs> so with all of this going on in this quarter res debayer and outputting at full 4K, if I hit play, you'll see that I'm averaging around 21, 22 frames per second performance. And they're still optimizing. 
So you can work with all this right now. And as far as I'm concerned, I mean, this is way better than I'm going to do on my Mac Pro 2010 Mac Pro at home. So I'm already impressed, and it's only going to get better.